is on and is live, I think. And, you know, what's, uh, what's not to like? So um, I've got questions that are not answering. And I also do suggestions here. Um, that would be very, very uh, welcome, and we can get a two-way finger on there. Um, so let's have, uh, can we have the first question, please? So this question says, let me get that. Uh, this question says, hey, XZDS5, good to see you here tonight. Um, I've got to get that off the screen, so a crawler on Facebook. I've got nothing on the screen here on Instagram because I can't, I don't know, I can't do it on Instagram. So um, this question says I had surgery in Brazil and I need a follow-up appointment because I don't like the shape of my breasts um, okay um, so the title of the surgery do you offer aftercare following surgery by the surgeons now I guess the question really on that one would be how long ago did you have your, have your surgery in Brazil so if you had your surgery in Brazil four years ago uh, and you don't like the shape of your breasts and you want to look at whether something can be done, yeah, fine, fine, yeah. Although, you know, it's always I always say it's best to go to your regional surgeon, but um, but you're welcome to, to come and see us. Now the thing is, did you? But the question is, if you had surgery recently, and I think um, we see quite a lot of people. Well, actually, you know, we don't see quite a lot of people, but but um, but sometimes people who've had surgery in Brazil or whatever, somewhere along way away, uh, are not particularly happy with the result or things aren't quite right and they were looking for the aftercare so that is a bit different so if you had your surgery recently then I would say and you're not happy with the shape of your breasts that is something you really need to work with your surgeon uh, for a couple of reasons first of all the surgeon is going to be best place to advise you uh, you might say well one's bigger than the other and he might or she might say um that swelling because I know they were absolutely perfect post-op or you know I tried I, I couldn't make that one smaller for this reason and that's going to be the case forever or um, you know or he might have a re he or she might have a reason for um, for it for, for things the issues that you might have which you know if you go and see someone else we're not going to know because we don't know what went on in the surgery we don't know what happened and how it went um, oh Kelly's a top fan We've got a top fan on Facebook, guys. Um, oh my God, we got we got um, we got all questions coming in left, right, and centre. Um, thanks, Kelly. Um, hold on, <laughs> get my question back. Oh Lord, I oh, will. Good, thanks, uh, Kelly. I'll answer your question and also Snap Blog. Um, nice name. Um, so, yes, if you had surgery recently your surgeon is always best place to look after you and talk to you about uh, the, the issues because your surgeon did the surgery. So really you need to talk to your surgeon. That's one reason because your surgeon did the surgery. Second reason is your surgeon's got a vested interest because it's your, uh, your his or her responsibility because you, um, once you operate on someone, you have a responsibility to, you know, see it through and make sure that it all heals up and you get a satisfactory result. And finally, it's th certainly in this country, and I think probably everywhere, I don't know, the when you pay for surgery, you sometimes people look at the surgery and look at how much you, you or we might earn from the surgery as a surgeon. And you might think, wow, you're on all, you know, all this money, you know, per, that operation's taking you an hour or taking two hours or whatever, and you've got paid this much money, therefore you get paid this much money per hour. And it's not like that because, yes, you get paid if, if that was all you were getting paid for, you know, the because if you look at the how much your surgeon gets paid versus how much the anaesthetist get paid and the surgeon gets paid a lot more than, than the anaesthetist, the surgical fee is a lot more than the anaesthetic fee. And you might say, well, that's not fair because the anaesthetist has gone through training and is a fully trained doctor and is, you know, arguably as important, if not more important than the surgeon when it comes to having surgery, because, you know, they've got a very important role to play, which I don't think anyone would argue with. The difference is the anaesthetist sees you just before the surgery, does the surgery and then probably never sees you again. 
Um, well, we might see you in the recovery, but that's it. So as a surgeon, we just get paid. For, we get paid a lot more, but we have to see you obviously before the surgery to talk about all the issues, but also after the surgery. As I said, we've got a duty, we've got a responsibility to make sure that everything set, heals satisfactorily and make sure you're happy with the results and you don't have any complications or any problems. And that is all part of what we're getting paid for. You don't pay for that extra. You don't pay extra for us to look after you afterwards and make sure that it all settles down and make sure you're happy with the result. You have paid for it when you've had the surgery. And therefore, if you have surgery somewhere else, you can't just come and have aftercare by another doctor because there isn't sort of like a separate price for the aftercare. The aftercare is all part of the surgery. And so that's all part and parcel of where you choose to have your surgery. And so if you've had surgery recently in Brazil and you're not happy with your breasts, then I would say you need to go back to your surgeon in Brazil um, or, you know, hopefully if it was sort of if you were living here and you went over there to have it done, there'll be some kind of liaison in this country. I would hope I, and I don't know how it would work with in terms of that. But that's something you put, you know, you need to look at. And you are considering having surgery. Why did it go three, two, one? It just went three, two, one on the Facebook. Um, so I um, don't know what's happened there. So, yeah. So I guess in answer to the question, do you offer aftercare following surgery by other surgeons? No. No. No, the aftercare is part of the surgery and those other surgeons that did your surgery will slash should uh, give you the aftercare as part of their surgery. You can't just do surgery on someone and then, then, then not look after them. Um, so you can't, you shouldn't. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Kelly's in the house in Facebook. So we've got a question over here, uh, Instagram. And I know Snap Blog, I've got your question there. I've got you, I've got you back. Uh, hi, so when I had my cesarean, I was in awful pain in my bum. Do you know what that could be? Um uh right um well uh this is a little bit out of my realm here kelly i've got to be honest with you i mean were you constipated um uh hemorrhoids can happen they can happen when you have a child um um i don't know kelly uh could, could have been something like that i mean that, those are the things i'd be thinking of something happening around your your, your bum um but um, oh, no. <laughs> oh, you, I hope you're still a top fan, Kelly, because I'm not answering your question very well. And I don't know. You'd have to you'd have to be examined. So there's lots of reasons for pain around your bum. Uh, if you are constipated, if you have a very hard stool, you can actually cut the 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 the, uh, the 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 skin around the bottom and have what's called an anal fissure, which can be extremely painful. Um, it's painful when you. Um, no, I was thinking maybe trauma to the bowels. No, trauma to the bowels wouldn't manifest itself as pain in your bum. Pain in your bum would be trauma to to the to be thinking. I mean, it's not my area. This is general surgeon's area. This is not my field. But I would be thinking. Hemorrhoids, uh, anal fissure, maybe just constipation. I don't know. Um, I'm I'm straying, Kelly. I'm straying from my um, my field um, here. So, um, so I, yeah, that's what I'd be thinking. Of. But um, yeah. Probably again, best to talk to the person around when you're in, you know, maybe your gynecologist, obstetrician, should I say, might be able to help. Um, so, snap blog, can you have surgery for scalp cysts and collarbone lipoma if on propanolol? Yes, you can, snap blog, absolutely fine. Uh, those sorts of surgery, scalp cysts and collarbone lipoma, could be done under a local anesthetic, which means you stay awake. So, um, pretty much. Most medication is fine. Now, propanolol will slow your heart rate down a bit, but um, that in any in some cases will be good because you might be less stressed for having the surgery. But uh, it's absolutely fine. And most medication, obviously, check with your surgeon. Men's 
and warfarin, um, you know, the things that will thin your blood. Maybe steroids, you might worry a little bit about healing if you're on steroids. Um, but uh, propanol is fine um, if, um, if you're having those operations, snap block. So that would be absolutely fine. Um, Selena Sambra, I had a TT tummy tuck, that is, guys, but I th but I but think I needed a 360. Is this hard to do now? I also, also got one dog ear. No, Selena, it's not hard to do at all. Struggling to hear. Oh, God, that's the last thing we need, isn't it, guys? Two on two on two, mic, mic, mic number one, mic number one. Mic number one, are you receiving me? Is that better? Should I hold it up? Should I, should I change the angle? Two on, two on two, two on two. I've got to be honest. Instagram's on a phone. I've got all fancy setup on um, uh, on on Facebook, but this, I don't know. I'm going to hold it here. Hopefully, that's better, Kelly. Um, Snapblog is scared. Should we say about local V general? Snapblog. If you're having a scalp cyst or a collarbone lipoma, assuming it's not big. I would say a local is going to be much better. I got a question a bit later on about local in general. Um, it's much better even, you know, if you can, local. A lot of people are scared about having a local, but it's usually, it's easy for me to say, isn't it? But it's usually not that bad. No, it isn't, honestly. <laughs> it be fine, isn't it? The scalp's a bit, ooh. But, um, you know, not too bad at all. should be fine. Um, sorry, I've got to come up here. Um, so uh i the uh, three here no it's not selena it's absolutely fine to do now selena if you it's easier to do now if you've done a tummy tuck because the tummy tuck is where you want the most uh, of the tuck and so you could do a, a, a finish the 360 sort of thing very rarely people need that to be honest with you selena but if you have got a lot of redundant skin at the back you could have a you know back tuck well, I don't know what it'd be called, but anyway, the, the, the remainder of the 360 degrees, basically, like a tummy tuck on the back, not a reverse tummy tuck, because that's a tummy tuck on the upper abdomen rather than the abdomen. And you've got a dog here, and that'll be fine to do that as well. And if you're having, if you are genuinely going to complete the 360, then that dog here would come out at the side uh, at the same time. It's going to be a palaver because it's going to be, you know, having you on your back probably in theatre, which isn't a great way to be. And it's going to be quite a big op to do the back. And so you'd have to question, is it worth it? I mean, you could just do the dog ear and maybe have a bit of liposuction. But anyway, in principle, you could do it. Um, and it would be fine to do because a 360 is quite a big deal. So I wouldn't I wouldn't be worried about not having a 360 in the first instance. Uh, 360 is quite a big deal. Um, Kelly says, I'm lagging so bad. Am I lagging bad? Am I bad lagging? I don't I can't tell if I'm lagging. Can I? I don't think I could tell. I apologize for the lag. Facebook's testing. Struggling. It's fine now. Instagram's running better. I think it is. It's the connection, not the volume. Oh. What is it, the internet? The kids are all on their games. I've got, well, I've got Microsoft Teams open. Should I close it? Oh, so it's not the volume. Oh, sorry about that. Um, right. Uh, the monarch is in the house. XZDS5 has said any update on GA procedures and how long is your waiting list at the moment? Um, sorry, I had a... <laughs> It's not good, is it? I had a scratch there. Um, that that is not that that's a question. XZDS about GA procedures. That's a question later on. So don't want to jump the butt gun. But um, not the answers. I'll, I'll tell you now. Not really. Not much of an update. Waiting list at the moment for local is pretty good. We're getting some local insulation cases done. GA is, God knows. I don't know if I'll be able to do GA's book this end this side of Christmas. XZDS. To be quite honest with you. Um, um, Connor, do you offer gynecomastia correction and surgery, e.g. removal of residual tissue? Yes, Connor. Yes, that's not unusual. And again, like with anything, always best to go and see your original surgeon. But uh, if you do, 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 do gynecomastia and there's residual uh, tissue, it's possible to remove it. I don't know how long it is since your surgery, Connor, but... Often people feel that residual tissue is feel that the scar tissue is residual tissue, so they um, think there's residual tissue there, but the scar tissue will soften. So I would wait probably a year is 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 where you want to be looking at for waiting before you do um, 
of revision because often it's scar tissue and you might massage it and it might soften and settle. But if it's been, you know, more than a year, then yeah, it's possible to go in and remove residual tissue. XZDS5 uh, said, do you do breast implants under local? You bet XZDS5 especially at the moment with the GA issues. Actually, that, again, the question is, what can you do under local sedation? But yeah, breast implants is probably the sort of signature local anesthetic and sedation case. It's a, it's a very um, uh, um, amenable, doable, whatever the word is, thing to, 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 to do under local sedation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Apologies for the, the, for the, the connection on Facebook viewers. Um, uh, Emma, ha oh, bless you, had an uplift with anchor scar with implants, but the junction under is very thin skin. Could a graft, it, could, could a graft it internal bra be done to thicken it, as can feel it implant in that section? Um, Emma, no. Negative. Nada, niente. No, 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 no. Um, so it's often thin in that T-junction because that T-junction is the tightest bit. It's under there. Skin graft ain't going to help you, girlfriend. Um, a skin graft is thinner than normal skin. So skin grafts, people think, are good. They're not that good. They're only good if you've got, you know, areas of skin loss and you're looking for a way to cover usually large areas of skin loss. Um, and the skin that you graft is thinner than the normal skin. So it's never as robust as normal skin. So I think if you're a skin graft would not be a good idea. Uh, the internal bra would also not be a good idea, I don't think. Um, or, or, although I think probably your internal bra, you're talking maybe about using some kind of um, dermal matrix, some kind of prosthetic um, mesh that you could sort of put in, in the way in between the skin and, and the implant. Um, again, I don't think that would be a good idea because if your skin's very thin, if the if you do surgery to put something underneath the skin and that skin then breaks down because you had to undermine it in order to put your mesh in um, and the mesh becomes exposed, if it gets infected, it's just a nightmare. So I don't think that's a good idea. And um, I th I don't, to be honest with you, Emma, I don't think much is a good idea. I think, I think probably I would say to you, leave it alone um, because um you can get all problems by doing stuff and under there at that t-junction you can often feel it to be honest with you if you're going to feel it anywhere if you're going to feel the Im implant anywhere it's under there it's under that t-junction so um i would say leave it alone i guess if you're going to push it and you really want something to cover the implant because you can feel it there the only thing in my head i'm thinking is fat graft but there's risk with fat graft because by definition, the implant's right there because you can feel it. So you can damage the implant. You can, um, uh, if you get an infection and infection gets to the implant, you have to remove the implant and there's not much skin to put the fat graft in. So it's really not a very good option at all, but it's probably the best option. Well, the other option would be maybe to revise the scar if the scar's stretched and is really thin, you could maybe revise the scar. But um, I don't think a skin graft's a good idea. And I don't think the internal bra thing is a good idea to thicken it. I think I would say that's that personally, based on a video um, uh, opinion. That's my video opinion of that, Emma. Don't, yeah, tricky one. Often, often the case down at that TJG, but it's sort of hidden under there. So if you can feel the implant and the skin's a bit thin, you know, maybe it's like, oh, well, you know, maybe put up with it, maybe. I'm not sure. Anyway, as I say, original surgeon's usually the best, unless I'm your original surgeon. Am I your original surgeon? If I'm your original surgeon, come and see me, Emma. What are you doing talking to me on Facebook for? Get yourself to the clinic. Uh, if I'm not, then, um, yeah, see your original surgeon. Connor right back at me thank you for answering my question i'll be in contact i hope you have a nice evening hope you have a nice evening too connor if you're still there um yeah uh anything on tv tonight people don't watch tv anymore do they don't watch the schedules anymore they just it's all on you know um what's it netflix etc um i still like tv i like the schedule i see what's on that's just me antiques road trip probably missed it now isn't it seven to eight i guess usually Ch channel 17 emma parker yeah mesh thing or just move to under muscle implant as over at the minute I have a lot of breast tissue as well as have thick breast tissue everywhere else you're not but will be coming too soon 
I'm not the surgeon. Right, okay, that's good. Well, it's not good. It's not good or bad. It's just what it is. Emma, I don't think putting it under the muscle will help. Putting it under the muscle will help. So in general terms, if you can feel the implant, um, then putting it under the muscle can help that because it gives an extra layer. But when you put it under the muscle, Emma, can you see? The muscle goes like that. It's just like that. Um, can I demonstrate? Uh, anyway, is that demonstrate? The muscle goes to your arm, to your breast, to, to your breastbone here, and it covers the implant in this area here, the top area, not in this area here. So you can feel it under there. Can, you can feel it under there. You can feel the implant under there. The muscle's up here. The muscle won't cover that. So putting it under the muscle is not going to help, Emma. Um, putting it on the muscle is not going to help. So it, putting it on the muscle helps when you can see the feel the implant here. You get rippling in the cleavage area, you know, up here, the upper pole. It won't really help it if it's under there. It's a tricky one, Emma. It's a tricky one. Um, here we go. Kelly's in. Kelly's got the knife in. Is revision surgery common or should it be done correctly the first surgery? <laughs> Um, well, that's a good question, Kelly. I mean, obviously, we always try and do it correctly the first surgery, but I've got to be honest with you, Kelly and Emma, a lift with implants is a big deal. A lift with implants is a big deal, and there's a, there's a relatively high risk of needing another surgery compared to other types of cosmetic breast surgery. It's, it's probably one of the highest, if not the highest, in terms of uh, revision surgery for cosmetic breast surgery. A lift with implants is a difficult operation. I tell this to everybody who has one. It's a difficult operation. It's hard to get everything right. And I've got to be honest with you, if your problem, if your main problem is you can feel the implant down there at the T-junction and the skin's a bit thin, um, that is not high on the list of things that can go bad with a lift with implants. There are much worse things that can go bad with a lift with implants. So um, that is why again talk to your surgeon but it, i'm thinking uh, there's no easy way to fix that just from what i'm hearing you saying and it might be worth just saying look you know what it's what it is i've got an implant in the skin's quite thin there and i can feel that implant underneath there if it's okay up here in the cosmetically sensitive area you can't feel it you can't see it i think anything to do it might be might, uh, anything to to improve it might be making things worse potentially my view um so is revision surgery common i wouldn't say common kelly but it is a thing revision surgery is a thing and there's two reasons for revision surgery one is a complication which is when things go bad infection and you know problems with implants and malposition and swelling and seromas and all these things these are sort of complications but the other is when it doesn't look quite right and that's quite subjective. And so sometimes you'll do a revision on someone where someone else would have said, look, you know, it's OK. So it's not like it's a disaster. It's not all gone bad. And it doesn't definitely need to be done. But sometimes you've got a little bit of bulge, a little scars not sitting right. You might do a little tweak and a little nip and a tuck to make things just right. It would still be classified as revision surgery. So um, but still, it's not like, oh, it's terrible. I'm going to make it going to fix it sort of thing. It should have been done right the first time, you know. When you're dealing with tissues, when you're dealing with the body, things happen and you doesn't always heal up as well as you would like. So, you know, a bit harsh saying should have been done correctly the first time. I'm always, I don't think anyone's out there trying to not do it right. Um, Emma, I know it was for moving it up and revising the scar. Yeah, moving. So revising the scar. Yeah, just exciting the scar. Gina Rowe, what's you? What's you, Gina? What's you? Salma Photo's got a question. Hi, on Instagram. We're over to Instagram now, team. Um, hi, Jonathan. Uh, what is the recovery time of having breast augmentation? When could you pick up your baby, especially if the baby is a clingy, clingy baby and likely to be held? Good question, Salma. This is why normally uh, the normal regime in terms of uh, surgery post pregnancy post having a post having a child is six months is what most people will tell you to wait six months i normally say a, a year is probably better and the reason i say that is because well the reason for the six month thing is you've got to let your body heal you've got to let your breast settle um you've got to let yourself get over all obviously the birth etc um and the breasts to, to try and see how much they're going to restore their shape i normally say a year i even say a year because at a year the child's a little bit older 
the child is perhaps maybe walking now or maybe a little bit less clingy. Obviously, the child's bigger, so it's going to be heavier. Um, and so I would say that's that's one of the reasons I say a year for the, for, the, for, for waiting. So, um, but in answer to your question, the recovery time, I normally say two weeks, after two weeks, you can start doing stuff and then four to six weeks for heavy lifting. Now, if you've got a small child at home, you cannot not cannot not lift your child for four to six weeks. If you work at b and I can give you a note, say don't do any heavy, lift, heavy lifting for six weeks. If you have a child, you have to, obviously, if the child comes up and says, mummy, you're going to obviously want to lift your child up. So what I would say is you probably adapt. That means you, rather than lifting your child up from a standing position, you'll sit down and put the child on your knee and things like that. So it's just about adapting things and making it so that it's a bit easier for you um and you know you will be able to do it but it will be uncomfortable in the first few weeks post-op but when you've got a child you've got no option if your child falls over you're going to pick them up um the only re the only bad thing about it is it'll make it swell the more you do the more you make it swell the more you make it swell the longer it'll take to settle and the, and the longer the recovery so it would have been better if you could have left it longer but you know so if you can get help in for a few weeks that'll be great but i understand your mum and mum is best so your child might want to be cuddled by you so yeah when you've got a child you have to just go and get on with it but it might mean that it takes a bit longer to settle um so after a couple of weeks you should be able to get him to start doing stuff so um gina do you ever visit london for consultations not anymore gina i used to um i um I got privileges. I think I've still got them. I don't know. They haven't told me I haven't, but I've got privileges or I've got, you know, a permission, if you like, to to uh, to go to a clinic in Harley Street, who is uh, which is owned by another plastic surgeon. And I used to go there. It was I, I went only went there for clinic appointments because I was still operating up in Birmingham. I didn't operate in London because I live in Birmingham. So um, if I operate in London, you, you have to sort of stay overnight and things like that and post op. And if you have any problems, it's just not great if I'm in Birmingham. So I only did it for consultations for people who live that way. But uh, to be totally honest with you, Gina, it wasn't very efficient going down there for the day and doing a clinic and then coming back again. Um, so my plan, which has been my plan for some time, which is uh, is to, I, there's a, I've got a colleague who works in London and to work with him and just like we got Kurum at the clinic and we've got Azam and Kirsten at the clinic, um to get other surgeons working with me sort of under my brand but you'll be looked after by them at other places and that's my plan to do that in london but at the moment i'm not doing clinics in london or i'm only doing clinics in birmingham so um i do visit london then my brother's in london so i was down there last couple, uh, couple of weeks ago last week i don't know Re um Salma, I received your book in the post. Kim says, yes, the book. Show it again. All right, Kim. Marketing, that's what we need. That's the book of which they speak, people. All right. That's what you need, okay? If you want to know about plastic surgery and stuff, that's what you need. Because this guy here has written a book, yeah? Right. Right. You see, it's, <laughs> it's actually not. That's not me. That's the that's image. But anyway, this guy has written a book about choosing a plastic surgeon. All right. So if anyone's interested, get the book. Twelve ninety nine on Amazon. Free on my website. Although you do pay postage. Or and if you're nearby, if you live if you live in Birmingham, come to the uh, clinic and we'll give you one. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, Kim's words must read. Okay. Her, her words, not mine. I have to put that on a quote put that on Instagram, you know, quote must read Kim and family. Uh, oh, Salma, big fan. Oh my God. I should be writing these down. I've got testimonials coming out of my ears. Big fan here. Salma photo, big fan here. Must read Kim and family. Yeah. What are they, what's everyone talking about? That's what they're talking about people. Yeah. That's what they're talking about. Okay, let's leave that. Um, let's just leave that somewhere in the shot, shall we, while I carry on. Can I put it back? Mm. 
product placement, that's what we need, isn't it? Hmm. Anyway. Oh, in the way right there. Yeah, that's right. Let's the side. So, um, thank you, Kim and Salma. Very kind of you to uh, endorse my uh, publication there. Uh, very proud of it, and I um, probably need to promote it more than I. Um, right, what is going on? Do you ever do consult? Yeah, no, I don't uh, at the moment, Gina. Well, not at the moment. I don't have any plans to. Um, um, Kelly, because if I was ever to get surgery abroad, the last thing I would want to do was go all the way back again for a revision. That's the problem, Kelly. That's that's the problem, and I think that is one of the reasons. Uh, in my book, I talk about um, going abroad for surgery, and that's one of the issues you've got to think about. If you need a revision or if you're not happy or if you want to see the surgeon, can you see them in this country? That's one of the issues that you can run into. Uh, that does look like you, does it? Oh, thank you. Well, I say thank you. I don't know, just a face mask, but uh, it ain't me, Kelly. It's not me. It's um, it's, uh, it's a stand-in. It's a body double. Emma, when are you open, reopen for surgery? as would like to see you and my other half to see your dermo team as he has a possible lipoma in his lower back. Would we be able to get seen me for consultation and him to get it removed? Emma, yes. So um, our dermo team, well, um, we, we've, we, we've only got plastic surgeons at the clinic, but we could all remove a li lipoma in the back. So we could definitely do that uh, for your other half, Emma. And we could also um, see you as well, Emma. So we are open for business. In terms of doing surgery, I've got a question about that. So I'll, I'll come on to that. But basically, we're doing local and sedation at the moment, which would be implants, etc. cetera. Um, but we're not doing bigger operations at the moment. Um, but we are doing local and sedation cases. So we are, you know, it's all pretty good at the moment. I've heard, I try not to watch the news, to be honest with you. I try and avoid it if I can. But I've heard they're talking about a second lockdown in Birmingham. Is that right? Lock, another lockdown in Birmingham. Is that correct? Um, or, you know, mooting that, that about. So, but assuming they don't, let's just get some cases done. And, you know, I don't know. Anyway, so we are open for business. Um, when will swelling go down after thigh lift? So with a thigh lift that cut into the groin and down the inner thigh, at what point should the swelling go down? Three weeks PO post-op um, currently and not seeing the skinny legs I'd like. Salma's heard it too. Mm. So, um, well, this is case in point because this is um, three weeks post-op. This is one, see, I, I know that I haven't done the surgery. So really you need to talk to your surgeon. Um, I won't, I won't name names because I don't know, but you know who you are. Um, you need to talk to your surgeon, but in general terms, three weeks is quite early days for surgery in general, in any surgery, particularly thigh lifting uh, or whatever. So three weeks is quite early. So to have swelling at three weeks is not uncommon. Um, I normally say things start to settle about three months and certainly six to eight weeks, you might still be quite swollen. So, um, yeah, um, that, but, but in general terms, that sort of thing, it would be wrong of me to make sort of, um, recommendations or, um, alter a post-op plan of another surgeon, at three weeks post-op. I think, you know, if you've got a problem at three weeks post-op and you're my patient and you go and ask another surgeon about it, I'm like, what? what do they know, you know, in terms of your operation, they might know about plastic surgery, but they don't know what I did. They don't know how I did it. They don't know what you were looking like before, what you look like, you know, so it really is your surgeon that you need to talk to in terms of um, how it's going in terms of recovery at three weeks. Um, Oh, where are we? So what do you suggest for the swelling after a tummy tuck? I've heard people really struggle with it. They feel like they are going to pop. Yeah, I mean, it's variable. I don't think it's that bad um, always, Kim, but I think it can be um, significant. Uh, the binder, the, the, the two things I would recommend, the two things I think really make a difference for the swelling is the binder, which is like a corset thing, and taking it easy. And I think if you're unable to take it easy, going back to the um, having a child and, you know, if you're, if you, if you, 
you know, if you go back to work too soon and things like that, then that can make, can make the swelling worse. So the main things I would recommend is bind a day and night. Um, uh, again, this is just my regime. So if you if you are having surgery with someone else, then everyone will have their own regime. So the binder and taking it easy. Um, if it's really swollen and you really feel like you're going to pop, obviously you've got to see a surgeon because that might be something like a seroma, like which is actually fluid actually collecting in the space. So that might be something I'm thinking about. Is it a seroma if it's like really swollen? But um, it's often, you know, feels pretty tight. Uh, and, and that's the other thing. It's it's swelling, but it also feels tight because it's closed so tight. So it's a bit of swelling and it's a tight space because you want it to be tight because you've just had a tummy tuck. So you um, you want it to be tight. So Salma photo twenty one. Will my areola reduction scar look like the same? Look, sorry, look the same as my C section scar? Is that is that a, ooh, is that a loaded question? What is your C section scar? Is that good, good or is your C section scar good or bad? Usually, your C section scar is pretty good, to be honest with you. So your areola reduction scar will look very puckered to start off with. So it won't look the same to start off with. Oh, pause due to poor connection. That is charming. On the back, oof, had a poor connection there. So areola reductions are often puckered in to start with. So, oh God, poor connection. Should I go and get the kids off the Xbox? Is that what it is? Sorry if this is poor connection on this. I'm sorry if I'm laggy, guys. I apologize. I, you know, anyway. So, um, Obviously, when you do a cesarean section, you make a cut and you stitch it up so it's a straight line. But when you do an areola reduction, you make a circle, then you make a bigger circle and you bring the bigger circle into the smaller circle. So it's all cinched up, puckered up. But over time, that puckering will settle and the redness will settle. And if you've got a good cesarean section scar, um, so I'm assuming you've got a good cesarean section scar. If you've got a good cesarean section scar, then hopefully it will look as good. Often the cesarean section scars are so good, they're hard to see. Areola reduction, it often depends on the areola. So if your areola is quite pink or quite quite pigmented more pigmented than your normal skin so if it's darker skin than your normal skin then you're going to have a more the scar is going to be better hidden if the areola reduction if the areola is similar skin to your normal skin so if your areola is paler and a similar color to your normal skin then the scar might be more obvious i don't know if that makes sense so if you've got a darker areola then the scar is easier to hide because we put it on the border of the areola and normal skin. So the more the demarcation, the more that scar is hidden. If there's not much of our demarcation between those two bits of skin, the scar will be more obvious. Does that make that clear? I don't know if I make that clear. Uh, looks good, the scar I have. Consultation with you next week. Looking forward to it, Salma Photo 21. I'm looking out for you. Um, I'm looking forward to that. Emma in Facebook has said she wants the dermo team. Yeah. Could you correct a dog ear while patient is weak? Absolutely, Emma, unless it's enormous. Yes, unless it's a huge one. But yeah, absolutely. Dog ear is a total one that we can do at the clinic, local anesthetic uh, while, while awake. Chloe, I've got to wait one year from my bypass until I can have implants and lift, etc., which is roughly July next year. I want it as soon as I can do when could slash would I need to book a consultation with yourself? What's the wait time between first consultation and surgery? Good question, Chloe. Now, Chloe, as a, the first point I'm going to make is you only ever pay for the first consultation. You never pay for follow-up consultations. So you can have the first consultation at any time. So you continue to have follow-up consultations six months, year, years later. So, you know, you, you, there's no problem with having a consultation at any time, even if you're going to have the surgery in July. But... Specifically, your question is like, when would I need to book in terms of getting surgery? I would say two or three months would be good. Um, it's always bad when someone says, I want to have surgery next month. You think, oh, crikey, you know. Um, so two or three months would be good. Um, but anytime, I'd be very happy to see you now. And even if you were having surgery in July, because we'll go over things again, uh, especially impl implants and lifts, quite a big deal. Um, so we can talk about things in general terms now and then go over things again closer to the time. It's quite a lot to go through with the lift and implants. You've got to talk about all the lift things, all the implant things, the different types of implants, shapes, profiles, uh, coatings of the implants, etc. So, um, yeah, but, um, you know, if you wanted to maybe start looking at it early next year, maybe because presumably if your weight's got to stabilise and things, that might be a reasonable thing to do. But um, I guess if you can leave it about three months before 
as a sort of minimum, if you like, that'd be good. Um, going well, I would say. I don't know about you. I feel it's going quite well. Um, here's a question that I was alluding to earlier that I said I had. Um, what procedures can be carried out under LA and sedation? Um, what procedures are you carrying out at the moment, LA and sedation? So, yeah. So, basically, um, so slight different, actually, from what the... So, what procedures... So, personally, all of the hospitals I work at are being used by the NHS. And so, I can't get any theatre space in the hospitals that I work at. So, I can't do any GA cases, any cases where you get put to sleep. GA cases are being done but um, not in the hostels I work at and not in plastic surgery, at least not in plastic surgery. In other surgeries there are, so it's fine to have a GA, but uh, the problem I've got is I can't get into hospitals. So therefore, the only, host uh, the only uh, work I'm doing is local anaesthetic at my clinic, and I'm going to start this month in a couple of weeks, I think, I'm going to start soon doing some local anaesthetic and sedation cases in a clinic nearby. Now, I've got to be honest with you, so the question, what can be done under local anaesthetic? Pretty much anything can be done under local anaesthetic. And um, I think in America, they're a bit further ahead with us than us with this. And uh, you can pretty much do any cosmetic surgery under local anaesthetic and sedation. I think the things that are really a no-no, I guess, are things like the 360 degree tummy tucks, things like that, you know, these really big operations. Now, um, the things that are on the limit are things like tummy tucks, Big uh, tummy tucks and big breast reductions, I think, for me, are the ones which I'd be a bit worried about. So I'm not going to do those. I have done them under local incidation and it's been fine, but it's pushing the boundaries a bit. So at the moment, I'm going to stick with the simpler ones, really, which are things like breast implants, um, smaller reductions, breast lifts, lift with implants, gynecomastia, liposuction, um, you know, small mini tummy tuck, for instance, smaller procedures, which are a bit more amenable to local insulation. But pretty much anything can be done under local anesthetic insulation. But for now, we're going with the, the, uh, the you know, the breast augmentations, breast lifts, as I say, uh, and, the, and the gynecomastia, etc. These are the sort of smaller procedures which we're doing under local insulation at the moment. But I can see us in a few years' time pretty much doing everything under local insulation, to be honest with you. This has probably forced our hand and pushed us, but uh, we'll see. But uh, in terms of this bigger cases, general anaesthetic cases like tummy tucks and the bigger breast reductions, we have to wait for the hospital to let us back in. It might be in a few weeks. I suspect it might be in a few months. You know, God knows what happens if we have another lockdown, but it might be after Christmas. I'm sorry to say, to be realistic. Emma, how much does it cost for a lipoma to be removed at your clinic and dog ear? Emma, it depends on how big they are. So it depends on how big your dog ear is, depends on how big your lipoma is. The, lipo the dog is probably a bit simpler, so I'm assuming it's a small one. Um, so having bits removed at our clinic start at 750, 750 pounds to have a to have a bit removed from up for, from you. Um, and then it goes up, obviously, for bigger bits and for more than one bits bit. So if you're having more, more, if you've got more than one dog ear, and if you've got bigger bits, then it might be more. Um, a lipoma it depends on the size, and also lipomas can be quite deep. I think you said it was on the back. So if you can feel it and it feels like it's relatively close to the skin, great. But if it's a deeper lipoma, that can be a bit more, you know, potentially a bit more. Difficult, but it's something we could probably examine in the clinic. We do uh, free consultations for this sort of thing. So you could come and have a consultation. We could give you a better, you know, more accurate quote. The other thing I say to people who want, want a quote is you can uh, uh, email us, email us a photo of things, uh, info at styanoplasticsurgery.co.uk. Uh, and we can give you a slightly more accurate quote, quote just so we don't say, oh, it's 750. And then you come and you've got this massive thing and we say it's not 750. And then... That's not good. Salma Photo 21 over on Instagram has said, and I quote, do you do breast augmentation using fat grafting? If so, how much would that cost? And is fat grafting to the breast worth it? I do do it, Salma, and I love it. I love fat grafting and I used to do it all the time, but I hardly ever do it these days, to be brutally honest with you, Salma. The reason I hardly ever do it is because 
goes to your second question, is it worth it? Because it's quite expensive. It's quite expensive. And in my hands, the results are quite subtle in my hands. Now, obviously, it's different for different people. Um, but in my hands, it's often quite subtle and it's quite expensive. And for me, the gold standard of making your breasts bigger is implants. Implants are the best way to make your breasts bigger. Um, for me, fat grafting is good if there's a bit of asymmetry, if you're balancing up things, if you've got a bit of a contour deformity, or if you, like we said earlier, got a bit of rippling of an implant or something, you need to get a bit of cover over the, over the implant, then fat grafting is good. So fat grafting has got quite a limited role in the breast in my practice. Some people um, advocate it for uh, breast augmentation, but in my experience, it's not quite there yet in terms of the volume you can, you can graft. And so it is quite subtle. And because it's quite expensive, you've got to be careful with it because you, is it worth it? That's the only thing you can say. And I would, I worry that it's not worth it if you're, if you want more than a subtle enhancement. So if you want a subtle enhancement, then it might be worth it because it's natural and you don't have to worry about implants, et cetera, and all the long-term effects of implants. But if you want a bigger enhancement, you might be a bit annoyed because it sometimes has to be repeated and you have to pay again the second time. It's quite an expensive procedure. It's almost as expensive as implants, but then you have to repeat it and do it again. Then it's like, oh, oh dear. You know, I'm thinking to do implants later on, but just wanted to know other options. I'm just scared to get implants. Yeah, I get it, Salma. I think a lot of people are scared to get implants, but um, I think fat grafting isn't quite there yet, unfortunately, because if it was, it'd be great, to be honest with you. I don't want to use implants if I don't have to because I don't want to have problems in the future and all the complications associated with implants. So I wouldn't use implants if I didn't ha have to. If there was another way of doing it, I would uh, I would grab it and run with it. And I do love doing fat grafting. It's a very rewarding thing to do. But it's just the results are really subtle. If you're doing a bilateral, like both sides, fat graft, you lost a lot of volume after pregnancy. So you have to restore that volume. Uh, and to restore that amount of volume, is often not possible with fat grafting and so it's um, potential for unhappiness there in my hands um, so the best way i feel at the moment the best way is to still implants to give volume to the breasts uh hold on a minute my partner hate me for asking but what's the biggest implants you do as want to go bigger and on the muscle of 500 cc's profile now and almost two years out of surgery emma emma what are you talking about hold on a minute salma's back in uh i have lost a lot of volume after pregnancy um yeah oh, did I, say, oh I saw that already didn't i so that was sorry i saw that already didn't i thank you yeah you're welcome um emma emma your partner emma what are you talking about have a word with yourself a minute ago, you're like, I can feel the implant and i got thin skin and I want a skin graft and all this. And now you're saying you want a bigger implant. Goodness me, if you can't hide this implant, you're going to struggle to hide a bigger implant. Um, and it's always a bit of a worry, to be honest with you, when someone wants the biggest implants you do. I struggle to make it look good. I'm going to be honest, full disclosure, let's face it, no one's watching. I'm going to be honest here. I struggle to make it look good with big implants it's not i feel i think some people that it's their thing you know some people are, are, are have a have a niche where with big implants it's not my niche it's not my thing it's not my niche i am more i try and respect the width of the breast i don't like going wider than the width of the breast i feel there's a there's a risk of running into trouble uniboob synmastia um, you know, lateral fullness, seeing, feeling edges of the implants, etc., rippling, all these things as you go bigger. You've got the same amount of breast to cover the implants, remember. We're not giving you any more breast. So if you're struggling to hide these implants, if you can feel these implants at the moment, you're going to feel them even worse by putting bigger implants in. If anything, you go smaller when you can feel the implants. So, um, you know, the, so the the thing is, and I, I like the fact you put a high profile there. So the next thing would be to go to extra high profile Emma, which will be a fuller look, um, would have more projection for the, and and well, for a similar base width. I don't know what the base width of your implants is at the moment, but um, so you'd be looking at, at a at a at a, a higher profile. So that's why you've got to not look just at the number. 
because if you go from a 500, for, instance, for the sake of argument, 500 cc high profile implant, you might go to a, an extra high profile. You might go 520, 560 extra high profile. And you might say, ah, it's not worth it. 20, 60 cc is not worth it. But you've got to look at the dimensions of the implant because a 520 cc extra high profile implant is going to be narrower than a 500 cc high profile implant. So it's going to have much more projection. So when you change profiles, it's significantly different than if you stay in the same profile. So a 500 cc high profile implant versus a 520 cc high profile implant, hardly any difference. They're both the same profile. They're going to be bigger in all dimensions, wider, a little bit more projection. But if you change profiles, you go from a 500 high to a 520 extra high or a 560 extra high, that is going to have much more of an effect than if you went from a 520 or a 560 high because you've changed profiles. So you've got to look at the dimensions of the implant because that implant is probably going to be narrower and a bigger volume. So it's going to be more projection, which is probably what you want, really. You want projection. So that is why don't get hurt. People say, oh, I've got 520. That's not a point. There might not be it might, it might not be that much difference, but or even 60, you know, that's not much point. It's only 60 cc, that's nothing. It don't just look at everyone looks at the numbers. You've got to stop looking at the numbers if you can. I know it's hard because it's the easiest way to sort of uh, judge implants, but um that is a, you know, that is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, you know, extra high profile is, is the way to go, but I'm also thinking I'm not a big implant guy I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay it there i'm gonna lay it there i'm not a, i've said it i've said it on live tv i'm not a big implant guy um kelly i haven't got a clue what 500 cc is it's it's big kelly 500 cc is big um it's half a liter it's some um, you know those bottles of coke you drink you know um it's about half a centimeter under that's thin as it was a small hole i just want it higher and i have thick skin and can't see implant now as have a lot of natural breasts so looking look very natural want it higher up in chest well higher up in chest can i inbox you on facebook yes you can emma by all means it, it, for higher up in chest is um uh, uh well that's another lift well if you want a whole lot higher on your chest that's another lift because um Implants aren't going to change the position of your nipples. So I think you've had a lift. You said you've had a lift. And you and it, this is alarm bells for me, Emma, because you just said you've had a hole there. So that's probably why the skin's thin at that T-junction. So you've had a hole there. You've had a breakdown there already. Um, I'd be very wary about putting bigger implants in, Emma. Your skin is struggling. Your skin is struggling to, your skin envelope is struggling to cover this implant. And you want to hit it with a bigger one. Um, I'd be worried about that, uh, Emma, personally, just from what you've said. Uh, benefits of going under the muscle. Could you breastfeed with over the muscle? Breastfeeding, um, if you're just having implants, whether it's under or over the muscle, your ability to breastfeed will not change. It will be the same whether it's under or over. The benefits of under the muscle are that it gives it extra layer of cover. So if, and as I say, the muscle cover covers the upper medial part of the, of the implant. So it's less likely to ripple, less likely to feel the edges and see the edges in here if you go under the muscle. The bad side of under the muscles, you can hold the implants up high, you can hold them wide, and you can get animation deformities, which means if you work at the gym, sometimes the breast can move when you um, when you move. So there are bad things with putting under the muscle, but there are good things. So if you're very slim, if you can see your rib cage, you might be thinking actually it might be worth putting them under the muscle to sort of hide it. Hide it there. Emma, by all means, you can inbox me anytime. Emma. Nipples are 20 centimeters of collarbone, so therefore they're not too low. That's fine. And skin is okay. Problem was with a stitch that was removed at a small hole. Okay. All right. Well, okay, Emma. All right. All right. Fair dues, Emma. Fair dues. You came back, came back, came, came back at me. All right. Okay. So if this, okay. I'm not sure if the, Emma, I'm not sure if the stitch would have made the skin thin though. That means it's under tension. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fair dues, Emma. Fair dues. Point taken. Kelly, why is it I've seen holes, caps, through people's tummy 
tuck scars, stroke breast implant scars, scares, gaps, I mean, not caps. Why is it I've seen hold gaps? Oh, got it, gaps. Because the wound is under tension, Kelly. And um, yeah, sometimes you get a little, you're probably seeing early post-op results. So maybe there's a little bit that doesn't heal up and there's a little, um, I'd have to know what you're talking about, see what you're talking about. But um, you can sometimes get little bits that don't heal up and little um, scabby bits and things with breast, in, well, not so much with breast implants, but certainly with lift with implants and certainly with tummy tuck because they're both closed under tension. So lift with implants at the T-junction and tummy tuck centrally. You can get little bits that um, form a little scab and take a bit longer to heal if you're seeing early post-op results. Um, but it is scary. Oh, is it scary? Is it scary or scar scares or scar or scars? Scars. Breast implant scars. Okay, but it is scary as well. Yeah, but this is why you have to. We talk about this, you know, in surgery. I mean, in the clinic before having surgery. You know, it's something to be aware of that you can get little bits that don't heal up and little um, scabs and things. And you know, they're all fine in the end, but it's, it's possible. Uh, Kelly, gaps, I meant not caps. Could If I could share a picture, I would, but it won't let me. Uh, oh, have you got a... Uh, you can put it on Facebook, uh, Kelly. Not put it on Facebook. Message me, can you, on Facebook? I'll happily have a look at a photo. I don't know how you can share a photo. Can you share a photo? I'm not sure. Um, so it's normal. I wouldn't say it's normal, Kelly. I'm not saying I wouldn't say it's normal, but I would say that it can happen. You know, I would say that it can happen. Little bits might not heal up as well as we'd like, and you can get little bits and bobs. I mean, I'd have to see what you mean by bits sort of holes and gaps. I mean, I'm talking about little bits of scabby areas is not uncommon. And like anything, if it's you, um, talk to your surgeon because your surgeon knows what went on. But um, yeah, in general terms, when you're doing cosmetic surgery, body contouring surgery, you're closing wounds under tension. And there is risks that wounds don't heal up as well as we'd like, which is why you must stop smoking. I'm not saying you, but people smoking reduces the blood supply to your skin and makes it more risk of wound breakdowns. So um, it just looks awful, doesn't it? It doesn't usually look that awful, Kelly. I don't know what you're... What your, um, what you're referring to if you've seen some really bad ones and certainly i guess if you troll the internet you can see some really bad stuff happening i mean it's not normally like really bad that you look at anything oh my lord look at that it's normally little scabby bits and little bits where you know when it's a bit runked up rucked ruck up and you know you just say oh okay that's, you often don't need a dressing just have a bit of gauze or something but um, i guess there's a spectrum kelly no i haven't done any cosmetic surgery okay yeah well it is um yeah, something to consider, Kelly. And uh, you've got to be realistic about the outcomes and expectations in order to be happy. So, um, but at the same time, if you troll the internet too much, you'll see terrible things all the time. But that's not reflected in life. I think people will skew what they post, I guess. Um, Salma Photo 21. I'd like to have an areola reduction, but also want to have another child. But I don't want to wait to have another child to have the reduction. I really just like how they look. Last question, sorry. Salma, bring it on the questions. Don't say last question, sorry. I'm all, for, I'm all ears. I'd like to have an aerial reduction, but I want to have another child. Then that's fine, Salma. Then have an aerial reduction. The only thing is, if you have another child, your breast can stretch and the areola can stretch. So the advice is any sort of breast reshaping to finish your children and avoid weight loss because having children and having weight loss having weight gain and loss can change the shape of your breast that doesn't mean you can't have surgery of course you can have surgery it's just that you might pay all this money to have surgery and then things might change if you had another child or if you your weight fluctuated so it's you know not ideal but it's your decision and if you don't want to wait so we would say to wait until they have surgery but you might say, well, it's going to be many years before and wait until you finish your ch children. You might say it's many years before I have um, finished my ch children. Well, in which case you can have surgery now then. You know, it's fine. It's just a uh, hi, Livy, uh, Olivia. Hi, Olivia. You know, so it's just it's something to balance. So it means you, you can have a, a, an area of reduction now, but it might stretch. Um, Kelly, I will send you a message now with a photo. Is that OK? That is fine. Sent inbox, Scott is kicking off. It's all kicking off on the inbox. Emma sent the inbox. Share to IGTV. Um, oh, let's get one. Uh, I'm 
um, sorry, the um, Instagram stops after an hour. So, but uh, bear with me, bear with me. I'll be back. I mean, we have we got, is it worth starting it again? I don't know. Add to series. I've got a series on Instagram. That's what happens when you, um, on your work page or personal work, Kelly, because the person, I don't understand Facebook and I sometimes see messages from back in the day. Um, so, you know, put it on work work is always the best because i don't i don't know where they go i'll be honest with you right let's see if we can get this back again now if it's worth it i don't know we'll try it anyway back in the room i don't know if we've got much to say but back on uh, instagram yeah work olivia it stopped on fit on instagram i think it's back now um so what was what was that? So yeah, the areola reduction and having another children. Yeah, breast reshaping. If you're going to have another child, um, you can do it, but it might change. So avoid having other children and avoid weight loss. But it doesn't mean you can't have other children or weight loss. You can still have other children and change your weight, but it might affect your result. So um, last question. Last question that I've got anyway. Um, I am happy with the side of my breast, but I'm happy with the shape. Do I need a reduction? So this um, basically is a patient who is happy with the size of the breast, but unhappy with the shape. So if you're happy with the size of your breast, normally there's there's size and there's shape. And size means they're too big or too small. Shape means they're droopy. So if they're too big, the best way to make them smaller is to... Um, sorry is to uh, reduce them. If they're too small, the best way to make them bigger is to use implants. Uh, if it's a shape that's a problem, if they're too droopy, then it's a lift. And um, a lift can be combined with implants or a reduction if it's shape and size. So if it's pure shape and you're happy with the size, then on paper, that's a reduction. Now, this patient uh, is, says, I'm happy with the size. I just want to lift. I'm like, fine, let's do a lift. But she's got quite big breasts. She's got quite a large volume of breasts. And the problem in those situations is that your breasts will be acted on by gravity. So your breasts will droop again. So from a purely surgical point of view, if you, it would be better to reduce some volume, especially from the lower pole of the breast, reduce some volume from the breasts at the time of the lift to prevent those breasts from drooping again because gravity will be acting on them. But it's really up to the patient. So I I have this conversation with the patient and I feel a bit bad trying to tell her that you know she'd be better off having a reduction when she's happy with the size because I don't want to do a reduction which will give her a more long lasting effect but she's unhappy with the size of her breasts. So I don't want to make her have a more long lasting effect of a result that she doesn't like. But if I don't do a reduction, I'll have to say the result won't last as long because the weight will make the breast droop again, which might be preferable to her to have a shorter lived result of the size that she wants rather than a longer lived in result of the size she doesn't want. So it's really up to the individual. So uh, if this if, if you've got a larger breast and you're happy with the size and you just feel that they're a bit droopy, you could have a lift but the weight will weigh them down again. And from a surgical point of view, if we could make them smaller, it would make the result last longer, but it's a bigger operation. There's more risk of complications. And um, what the heck was that? And um, my phone, what's the iPad over there? Um, hi, Wendy. Uh, and so that's a tricky one. That's a tricky one because um, it depends on if you are genuinely happy with the size. If you don't mind being a bit smaller, it will probably be good to take a bit of volume out of the lower pole at the time of the lift, which I think what we agree with this patient here. I hope that was a specific patient I had in mind with this question, so I hope that's that's translated. Um, when you do my area reduction, oh, crikey, um, 
would my areolas look droopy or could you make them sit up perky? Um, they would look similar. To be honest with you, it's not the areola that's droopy, it's the breast that's droopy. So it wouldn't do a great deal to the breast. When you do an areola reduction, you're just really tightening the skin around the areola. So you're not doing a significant amount to change the shape of the breast. So if your breast looks a bit droopy, then you might be thinking about a breast lift, which would incorporate an areola reduction and tighten the whole breast and bring the whole breast higher up on your chest and make the whole breast more perky. An areola reduction in itself will just really change the size of the areola. Some people do do a what's called a circumareola mastopexy, which is basically a glorified areola reduction to, to make the breast look more perky. But in my experience, it doesn't work very well. If you want to break, make the breast more perky, you do a breast lift, which means as well as the scar around the areola, you have one scars going down and maybe even one in the fold as well. So it wouldn't, I wouldn't like to say it's going to make your breast look significantly more perky. And what we do if you, when, if and when you come to clinic, I'll show you some photos of people who've had areola reduction so you can get an idea of what you can expect. But really, it's just the areola that's going to be smaller rather than the breast going to be more perky. When doing, oh, XSDS5 is back. When doing an areola reduction, would you make the areola nipple sit up perky? Oh, that was the same. Yeah, okay. Um, sorry, what's on your work page or personal? I stopped I stopped to Facebook now. Um, I'm back in the UK on Thursday. Okay. You probably answered this already. Sorry, news on surgery days be available. Yeah, local anesthetic and sedation we're doing now, Olivia. And uh, GA probably, I don't know, but I'm guessing after Christmas at this rate, I don't know. They're not telling us anything because they don't know anything. That's the problem, as in the hospitals. But we're not doing any GAs at the hospitals at the moment. And we're chasing them. But it's not looking great, Olivia, for the GA cases. Emma, have inboxed you on Facebook with pics of under and them now and how I would like them to sit. OK, Emma, I'll get back to you on Facebook on the message. Um, uh, but thank you for that. I'd be happy to look at those. And if you are happy, I'll, I'll say, if you want me to show them next week, I'll, I'll probably have to put something over the nipples and things. Um, I'm happy to talk about them on this on this forum, if you want, next week, if you want me to show you photos. If you don't want me to show you photos, I totally understand. I get it, you know, personal and all that. Um, before and after photos would help. Yes, Selma, I'll show you before, before and after photos in the clinic. But there should be some on our website. There's an areola reduction page. There should be some photos on there. What's the recovery like for local following breast implants? Well, the long-term recovery is the same, XZDS5. It's the main thing about the local anesthetic and sedation is the short-term recovery is much quicker with local anesthetic and sedation than it is with the general. So with the general anesthetic, you feel quite drowsy, you feel quite tired, um, and you feel quite sort of groggy and sort of you get hangover effects. With local and sedation, you are much more alert. And so local anesthetic and sedation, like an hour after the operation, you're out the door, you go home, you, you don't really stay overnight. It's a day case, whereas with a general anesthetic, you can still sometimes go home the same day with a general, but it's uh, a bit more of a, uh, you feel a bit more groggy after a general. Uh, in terms of the, low, of the recovery after that, you know, dressing a week, two weeks for driving, then four to six weeks with the exercise, that's the same, whether it's a local or a general. There's two before and afters. My breasts are droopier than before having a baby. I was just worried that an areola reduction would make them look worse. I don't think it would make them worse, Salma. It would certainly make your areola look better, but it might not have a significant effect on the shape of your breasts. So if you did want your breasts to be uh, the, a significant effect, then maybe go and look at the Masterpexy page and the breast lift photos to see if it's a breast lift that you would, which would be best, which might be better if. You want the whole thing tightened, the whole breast tightened. Um, I see. Uh, can you do tummy tuck with local? Would you prepare to do that? The you know, answer is you can do it, Olivia. Um, and I have done it. But at the moment, the things that I'm doing local and sedation are not tummy tuck. I'm doing uh, so tummy tuck and big breast reductions. I'm, I'm holding back for the GAs. You can do it, and I have done it, but it's it's sort of top end of what you do under local installation. Um, don't mind all over Facebook and Insta anyway, so feel free. But if you could get back to me in Messenger, uh, as not have to be more than 500, just look more like pick I sent in bra. Okay, good. Thanks, Emma. 
Thanks, Mr. Stoner. You are the best. I'm going now. Bye. XZDS5, you are the best. And thanks for coming. And thanks for coming back to this Instagram. I think I'm going soon too as well. So um, have a good evening. And um, I'm out of questions, by the way. Has anyone's got any questions? I mean, XZDS5 has gone. Is there any point in carrying on now that XZDS5 has gone? Um, oh, God, Salma Photo 21's off too. Flipping heck. They're all going, guys. Well, uh, in that case, I will. Um, thanks, for, thanks for asking, Salma Photo 21. I will see you all this time next week. I will have a look at your photos, Emma, and I'll get back to you on the message. Um, messenger, messenger, messenger. And I will um, wish you all a good evening and um, a lovely week. And see you next week. Don't mind. OK, I'll leave you. Enjoy the rest of your evening with the family. Feel safe. Uh, right back at you, Emma. Did you do my leg question? I did do your leg question, Emma. Olivia, I did. Yes. So I'll be on the catch up. So uh, see you next week for the consultation. Wow, look at that, Salma. We'll see you in real life. That'd be crazy. Right, guys. 